Hi, I'm Ryan with Digico. I'm excited to take you for a quick tour of the Digico S21. So let's talk about the S21 physically. It's designed and built on an extruded aluminum chassis. Starting at the top, you have an LED dimmable lighting bridge, dual multi-touch displays, 27 touch-sensitive push-button encoders, 21 touch-sensitive moving faders, and even a quarter-inch and eighth-inch headphone jack. Now to navigate around the console, we actually do this through layers. Right now you're seeing input channels 1 through 20 across both screens. I can press the layer down and I can move to layer 2 which will show me inputs 21 through 40. I can then move on to auxes into groups and to my matrix, my solos, and my control groups. So this is the quick way to move around this console. This is a default session so you turning on a console this will look exactly the same way. To set up or configure a channel, you're gonna to go to the channel setup menu. Do this by pressing the top of the channel. This will give you signal flow from the very input source all the way to the output bus. So here we can see that it's already set to mic one and to set it or change it to another source, we just press this box and we can see all of our different options, all of our different ports. First you have internals. So these are channel outputs, graphic EQs, effects, or oscillators. We have local I.O. These are the mic pre's on the back, uh, AES inputs, uh, USB, uh, USB interface, uh, or any of the two DMI card slots. So to route, we simply go to ripple route, select the first that we want to go to, the last that we want to go to. In this case, I want to route channels 1 through 24, or the inputs on the back of the console, to my channels. I'm going to hit route and I'm done. So let's talk about signal flow. Once you open the channel setup menu, we have the choice to, uh, to set our input source, but if you look through, you're actually gonna see the, in, or the options for input processing, for insert assignment, for channel processing, for insert A and, or A and B points, as well as the outputs of the console. We can choose any one of these points and we can navigate directly from there. So if I wanna see the EQ for this channel, I can just touch the EQ and I can go right to it from this menu. I can also go to it directly from the channel by pressing the EQ there. Okay? The same thing works for dynamics. I can choose one of the dynamics directly from the overview screen or I can actually get it from the setup menu itself. Same thing as before. Right? So let's talk about recording for a minute. One of the big things is to be able to record and do what we call virtual sound check. This is not only just a multi-track recording of what's going on on stage, but the ability to play that back through the console. So the first thing I do is to go to my recording send, choose it just like we did the input routing. I'll do my ripple route, but in this case I'm going to take it to my built-in UB MADI. So 1 through 24 to match those 24 mic pre's that I grabbed. And then I'm going to set the return, which is going to be the same, 1 through 24. In this case it's a 1 to 1 patch. What that does is that allows us to take whatever's brought into this console, send it back out to be recorded by whatever DAW you want, played back, and brought back into the console. And that actually takes us to one more step. We actually want to talk about some macros. Macros are user customizable options, so the quick actions that I want to get to on the console. In this case, I actually want to be able to go in and out of virtual sound check very quickly. Here, I'm going to grab the listen to copied audio, and I'm going to drag it up to my macro bar, do the same thing for the listen to sources and drag that up onto the screen as well. Once it's up there, now I have the option to quickly toggle to what is being recorded and quickly toggle back to what is live. Okay, so let's talk about navigation and actually working your way through the console. So first off, you'll notice they're laid out in channel strips. So on this screen, I actually have 10 channels. In my case, it's 11 through 20. To, uh, to get to the channel setup, as we mentioned before, touch the top and I can actually see my signal flow all the way through. Now one of the interesting parts about this is if I want to get into any one of these sections I just touch it and I'm taken there instantly. Let's say EQ. So I can touch my EQ and I can go to that EQ section right away for that selected channel. The other option is to actually just touch the EQ from the channel overview. So I'm looking at 10 channels I can touch any one of the 10 that I want, go right to the dynamics or I can go right to the Dynamics 2, or I can go right to the EQ as mentioned before. Now while I'm in EQ, let's talk about this. We have four bands of parametric which are selectable from the screen or from the side. I can also select my high pass and low pass filters. These can be used on screen so I can move them around or I can use the encoder 
over on the right of the screen to, to move these. You'll notice the dynamic labels over here follow what the function is that I've selected on the screen. I can also use these buttons uh, to, uh, to turn on and off those filters. While I'm in here, I can turn on the EQ and I can manipulate any of the bands, frequency and Q directly from on screen. All right, so let's talk about dynamics. Right below the EQ, I have my Dynamics 1. Once engaged, I have the option to turn this into a compressor or a multiband compressor. Or I can select Dynamics 2. Dynamics 2, once engaged, will give me the option to be a compressor with sidechain, keyed gate, or a ducker. In this case, I want the gate. To finish up navigating through the channel, we actually have our aux sense. At the very bottom, you'll notice that we have aux 1 through aux 4 in this case. And I can take my finger and drag to move to see the rest of the auxes. So in this case, this console is set up for eight auxes. Four of them are mono and four of them are stereo. Now to navigate, once again, I can just press and hold and I can assign that row of encoders or that function to this row of encoders. I can do the same thing for a compressor or for high pass filters or my mic praise. So just press and hold on that function and assign it to the encoders. Also, once the channel is selected, I have the option to select a single aux. That'll show up here on the encoder as well, so I can manipulate one individually. Turn it on and off by pushing. Okay. Now, for monitor engineers, to speed up navigation, we're going to go back to our macros, and we're actually going to take one of our preferences, which is aux to faders, move that up to our macro bar. Now we have the option to do sends on faders. Once this is active, I can press the aux, and now, instead of just being to my encoders, the level is actually to my faders as well. So I can use these faders to manipulate my level of my mix, as well as uh, use the encoder to turn it on and off. Now if I'm on a stereo aux, let's go grab aux 7, I still have the option for level, but this encoder now becomes pan. So now I can move um, my uh, source throughout the spectrum in the left or right send to the ears. So we've been looking at input channels. Let's talk about the other types of channels on this console. So hit your layer button to navigate down until you see different colors on the screen. Over on the left hand side, you're gonna see your aux masters. Right now that setup is four mono and four stereo. On the right hand side, I see my group masters. These are four mono and four stereo as well, plus the actual left right master group. So these work exactly the same way as input channels. So I can take and select the top of that aux master, and I can get to see not only the signal flow for that aux master, but I can also get to things like make it a stereo aux, or I can change that from an aux to a group, which is gonna give me a warning for the change as it should. So I'm looking at my aux masters on the left, I'm also looking at my groups on the right. Um, these are all assignable to channels and all assignable to the same functions we just did for an input channel. So I can select the EQ to manipulate the EQ, engage that, adjust the queue as well, or use the encoders for any of these functions. So these all work exactly the same as input channels. If you continue on down, you're actually going to see your, aux, or your matrix outputs, your solo buses, and your VCAs. So starting on the left side of the screen with your matrix output masters, they work exactly the same way as input channels, auxes, and groups. Maybe I need to add some compression to the matrix output. I can directly select this, engage this, and I can uh, have that dynamics control directly on the matrix output. Navigation for input channels and output buses are identical. You get through it the same way. Here you'll notice there's solo bus one and two. We can change these functions between being mono or stereo, being PFL or AFL, and by being multi or single select. You'll also notice we have things like input processing, delay, and channel processing available on solos. And we have our 10 VCAs. Uh, we call these control groups, but they operate like you're used to VCAs operating. We can actually come in here and choose who are the members of this VCA. So if I hit edit, I'll actually be presented with all of the processing channels on my console. And I can simply come through, grab the channels that need to be a member, tell it OK, and now I have four members to this VCA. All right, so let's talk about graphic EQs. By touching the Digico menu in the top left corner of the screen, you'll actually see your uh, menu sources. So we can actually go to our effects rack, graphic EQs, our matrix mixer from here. I'm gonna select graphic EQs. If I, this is something I need to routinely get to, we can actually take a step back, go back to our macros, and assign our graphic EQs up to this macro bar so they're always available for us. So no matter where we are, we can get right to our graphic EQs. 
You have 16 graphic EQs. These are 32 band graphic EQs. We select one at a time. Once we're in there, those are assigned down to the faders. So we actually can control and manipulate those levels directly from there or uh, scroll back and forth on the screen to select the frequency that we need to. There's also a flatten and copy so we can take settings from one uh, graphic EQ to the other. To assign a graphic EQ, let's actually go look at an aux master. Let's say we wanted to do this to a mono uh, wedge mix. So I'm going to actually select aux 4 in this case. I'm going to take insert A, insert A send, go internal to graphic EQ 1, take the return from graphic EQ 1, which is selected automatically, and I turn that insert on. Now I'm going to my aux send, going to my graphic EQ, returning from my graphic EQ back into the aux master. And I can quickly get to that aux if I need to, or that graphic EQ right from the screen. Okay, to get to effects, go to the Digico menu button in the top left hand corner and select effects rack. This will show you eight effects racks, all of which are empty right now. So let's touch the first one to assign. In this case, I want to assign a delay. So let's go in, select delay, and this will give me my option for on-screen tap tempo. It'll also let me change the readout from milliseconds to BPM, samples, meters, or feet, however I prefer to view it. I can also adjust the rest of my parameters from here uh, by the encoders or by dragging on screen. All right, let's look at the matrix input mixer. Select the Digico menu in the top left and choose matrix. Now I'll see my 10 inputs, none of which are assigned currently, and then all of the cross points that I can mix these to. So let's look at uh, the first one where it says no input, press that, and now I have the list of sources that I want this to come from. In this case, I want channel outputs. So I want the output of my master left and right. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to say ripple. And I'm going to tell it to grab the master left and right. So in this case, master left, master right, hit OK. And now when I go back, I'll actually see that my master and my left, master left and master right are brought into my matrix mixer. Now I can control the level at which these are sending out. I've selected two, I use my encoder, and I engage those, turn those up to zero. Now my master left and right coming into my matrix, passing on to matrix outputs one and two. Okay, so let's talk about laying out your console uh, to suit your needs, whatever your show may hold. So there's a few more buttons on the surface. In addition to our layer navigation, we actually have the option to change the layout of the surface. Go to the overview button here, and you're gonna see an overview of the entire desk. This is exactly how I have my console laid out in four layers. Inputs, inputs, auxes, groups, matrix, and control groups. This can all be edited. First off, you can move banks around. So if you put it in the edit mode, I can actually come in here and I can swap banks. So now I could move my VCAs maybe up to the top. Maybe that's the first thing I want to see. Or uh, I can move these between screens. So I can actually move these left and right. Okay. In addition to that, I have the option to set a master which is probably how most front of house and engineers would prefer. So I grab my VCAs, for instance, and now every other menu, every other bank has moved on to the left side of the screen. So now all my navigation occurs over there while my right side stays stationary. Get back into the overview, I can clear this. Hit edit, and then I can choose to clear the master. This will take me back to how it was laid out before. Now, also while I'm in this view, I can physically move an individual channel wherever it needs to be. So let's say we weren't using channel, I don't know, let's say 14. I can actually take this and I can actually move this to the unused or unassigned channels. I don't have to use it on the console. So now when I go back to my channels, back to my layout, you'll actually notice that there's a slot here. I can put anything I want to in here. In fact, I can override anything with anything. So for some reason, if I need my master up on the top layer, I could move it to that empty slot move a control group up there as well. And now when we go back to look at that, you'll notice we have input channels, my master, more input channels, my control group, and more input channels. You can customize this however you need to. In addition, there's one more hidden feature here, and that is the set spill. When you're in edit mode, um, you'll actually see the option on the bottom right-hand screen, and I can drag whatever channels I want. In this case, let's say master, and let's take some control groups and move those down into this option as well, as well as some input channels. Okay, So these are the four things that I need to get to at any point in time. Once those are assigned, we'll actually have direct access through this button here. This is the set spill button. So wherever I am, whatever layer, 
I can press this button and those will, channels that I have assigned will slide in from the right hand side of the screen. So now I have my master, I have control groups, and I have that input channel. And these are available whichever bank I go to and they always stay up until I turn it off. This can be up to 10 channels assigned and that set spill can be brought in and out. So this could be your aux masters, your control groups, uh, or just additional input channels, those channels you always want to see on your surface. Taking a look at the back of the S21, you'll see we have 24 SD series mic pre's on board, 12 analog outputs, an AES input and output, word clock input and output, GPIO, USB, two network ports, DVI overview, a UB MADI interface. This is a 48 by 48 channel USB recording interface. We have two Digico multi-channel interface or DMI card slots. These are 64 channel cards at 48 or 96K depending upon your digital audio format. Depending upon your package, they may come blank. You may come with a MADI C or MADI B card. And in my case, I've added a Dante card here as well. Thank you.